Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this month's Instant Insight webinar. Today, we have Andrew Prokop joining us um, to conduct a live demo of Avaya Breeze. So with that said, Andrew, I will hand the line over to you. Thank you, Kelly. So good morning, and uh, I would also like to welcome you to the welcome you to the latest episode of Aero Systems Integrations Instant Insight webinars. Again, my name is Andrew Prokop, and for the next hour, I'm going to show you Avaya Breeze up close and personal. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Breeze, though, there are a few things that I want you to understand. First, Breeze is not new and has been around for a number of years. It began as collaboration environment was rebranded as Engagement Development Platform, or EDP, and was recently named Breeze. So in other words, the technology is significantly more mature than the name would lead you to believe. Second, Breeze is a development platform to create multimodal workflows. This means that it's much more than a tool to simply write voice-centric applications. Breeze supports SMS text, email, video, web services, database access, voice, and a host of other integration technologies. In fact, I have written Breeze workflows that connected Internet of Things devices, like sensors, with public cloud services, and no telephones were involved there. Third, there are two ways to write Breeze applications, or snap-ins, as Avaya calls them. You can write Java code straight to the Breeze APIs. Of course, that requires you to be a Java programmer. So while you can create some incredibly powerful snap-ins that way, it requires a skill set that most people do not have. The easier and much faster way is to use the drag and drop tool called Engagement Designer. And I like to say that if you can draw your idea out on a whiteboard, you can turn that idea into an application with a few clicks and some typing. And by the way, Engagement Designer is in itself a snap-in used to create snap-ins. Pretty cool. And the last important point is that in addition to being a development platform, Breeze has an ecosystem of pre-written solutions. Examples include the Breeze snap-ins for Park and Page, Conference Assist, WebRTC, and Smart Caller ID. Now, quite a few of these come from Avaya, but there are a number from non-Avaya sources. For example, there are SMS text snap-ins from WebText and Clickatel. Well, I'm actually going to be using the um, a WebText snap-in during some of these uh, demos here. OK, so now enough talk. The point of this webinar is to show you how easy it is to write Breeze snap-ins. And for that, I will use the Engagement Designer drag-and-drop drag tool and get busy on a few simple yet demonstrative snap-ins. However, though, there actually is one more thing I want to show you. And I'm going to actually um, get out of this and go into my web browser. On the, um, and this is YouTube here. On the Aero Systems in YouTube channel, so you go to YouTube and search for Aero Systems Integration, and you come up with our channel. Uh, there are a number of videos that I've produced that actually walk you through um, Breeze technology. I produced um, what is it, six uh, introductory videos, and then four advanced uh, videos. So if you go to Aero Systems Integration YouTube channel, and then click on playlist you'll see the introductory series. And again, there are six in there. Um, if we go back here, and you can see I have uh, four uh, of the advanced. I have one more in development. is isn't out yet, but there's one more. Also, while you're there, I would like you to notice that uh, there are a number of other playlists that we have. And in, in fact, the Instant Insight webinar recordings are there as well. So if you want to see some of the ones that we've done in the past, including some by yours truly here, like WebRTC for beginners, then you can do that. So anyway, so enough of that. So the videos are there. Um, they will demonstrate a lot of the things uh, that you are going to see today, plus a whole lot more. And I'll probably refer to some of the videos because I don't have, really have enough time to do everything that I'd like to do today. So I'll point you back to the videos and say, you know, go to video five, and you'll get um, in-depth um, explanation as to how this stuff actually works. So let's um, go over, and uh, I've launched a System Manager. Hopefully you guys are familiar with what System Manager is. System Manager is the Avaya tool that allows you to administer an Avaya system. Well, one of the things it allows you to do is it allows you to administer Breeze. So if I bring up that, and I bring up this thing called Cluster Administration, I have a number of things that I can choose 
uh, to run on that cluster. And that cluster is basically a breeze server, a collection of breeze servers. I'm going to run the uh, engagement designer tools. This is the drag and drop tool that allows you to create applications. Now, clearly, as you can tell, it's web-based. So I'm running, running this from a web browser. I'm using Firefox today. I've used uh, Chrome as well, and uh, both of them are perfectly fine. So let me show you what you're looking at. Actually, let me explain to you what you're looking at. So this is the tool that you use to create applications. This thing in the middle, this is kind of your, your, um, your work area. This is where I'm, gonna, I'm going to create a Breeze applications, um, or snap-ins again. They're called snap-ins, and you're going to see how easy it is to create them. And I'm going to do a number of different things and show you some of the concepts. I'm not going to write any horribly complicated applications, although I'm going to bring one up that I previously written that is a little more complicated. But I'm going to show you the basics of how you do this, how you put them together, um, how you make uh, phones ring, how you send SMS text messages, how can you write an application that intercepts an incoming call. I will talk a little bit about web services. I will talk a little bit about context store and database access and then a few other interesting tidbits along the way. And again, the videos take it much deeper than I can do here in an hour. Um, so again, this is the development area. This is where I'm going to write my application. Now, over here on the left side are a collection of cabinets, and what's inside of these cabinets are going to be tasks that I can use to develop applications. For instance, if I open up telephony communications, you'll see there are all these different tasks that I can use when I write an application. If I come over here and open up media communications, you'll see other tasks uh, associated with media processing that you can use. Um, let's say um, a gateways, this will be for, and I'll see a little bit about this if I want to add logic, kind of if you think if then else type logic into, um, into a workflow or a snap-in. And then I'm gonna show you a little bit about some of these uh, integration points like for uh, database processing. Um, I'm going to show you an example where I use uh, RESTful Web Services. So I'm going to actually call out to a cloud service and show you how all of that works. So I will, as we're developing applications, you're going to see um, uh, some of that uh, uh, a little more uh, up close. Um, along the top here are different uh, tools that you can use as when you're developing your applications. For instance, I can open up an existing workflow. So if I click on this, I can slide down and I have a directory uh, that I have a, a number of different workflows that I've already created. Um, when I create a workflow, and we're going to save a workflow, and you see how that works, and we can do a save and a save as. Delete workflows. Um, I can export a workflow to a file, um, and then I can import a workflow from a file. So I can do this when I'm makes you, you know, moving from one workflow or one system to another system, or if I develop a really cool uh, snap in that I want to share with a coworker who is on another Breeze system, and we have a number of Breeze systems that we use, and I can say, hey, here's the file, and you can go and upload that file. A uh, little interesting tidbit, um, the, the uh, workflows themselves are XML files, so if I actually open up one of these, we'll see that it's an XML with some JSON inside of it, a JSON JavaScript object notation. I'm going to show you a little bit about that as we go along. So it's, um, it's stored as um, basically uh, an interpreted file. So it, you will, um, um, the, what happens is the, uh, the Breeze snap-in will actually read this file in and then call to the underlying uh, Java code. So you're not writing the Java code, it's, doing, it's writing to the Java code for you, but it's doing it in a much simpler way. Um, and then you can do things like validate a workflow. I'll do a little bit of that. So you've written a workflow and you want to make sure that it's correct. You can validate it. Um, and then uh, the last really important one is deploy a workflow. So once we've created a snap-in, and I will use the term snap-in, application, and workflow almost interchangeably, but after I've created a snap-in or a workflow and I want to deploy it, then I would actually go up here and click on this, and, and that's what will send that to the uh, Breeze server, and then we can run the Breeze server. I'm going to show you at least three different ways to execute an application, run a, run a Breeze application. So let's get, uh, let's actually get started. And I'm going to do something really, really simple. Um, I'm going to create, uh, well, this is election time of year, if you haven't figured that out here in the United States. So, um, and if you're like my house, you're probably being inundated with robocalls, you know, vote for so-and-so or don't vote for such-and-such. 
So we're going to create a very basic one like that. But if you don't want to think about elections, maybe we can think about hospitality, and maybe we can think that we're creating a really uh, cool uh, wake-up service, you know, something that sends a wake-up service call to somebody. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. And where do you start? Well, you start with start. So all breeze, snap-ins, workflows, applications will start at start. Uh, in my very, very simple um, um, uh, robocall application, what I want to do is I want to send a call. So I'm going to make a call, and then we're going to keep modifying this as we go along. I will tell you right now that I'm going to do this in a very brute force manner. And so I'm going to do it in the, the simplest way, but I'm going to hard code a bunch of things down into it. But don't get scared. Don't think that, you know, hey, this only works for one phone number. You know, I'm going to show you how you make, and make, make things more flexible. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to start fairly simply. So again, here's my workflow. So what I want to do is I want to start, and then I want to make a call. So I'm going to make a call to somebody. You know, um, again, this is, we'll go back to my, my robocall for voting. Well, at that point, now I want to send out my pitch. So I can open up now media communications and I'm going to do a play announcement. And so I'm going to send the play announcement that way. Uh, it, uh, then I can say, well, you know, I'm kind of all done with this. So I've uh, made, the, made the call, played the announcement, and now I want to drop the call. So I go over and drop the call. And uh, as it is with uh, life in general, all good things come to an end. So I will then end the workflow. And I apologize, these aren't as straight as they could be, but they're, they're good enough. Now let's connect them together. So I go from start. Now I'm kind of grabbing this little blue arrow to play announcement, to drop call, to end. So we have now just created a, a snap-in. Now I haven't filled in the right, you know, enough information. But it's a snap-in, so that's a simple, I mean, that's pretty simple. Uh, imagine writing that application with TSAPI or something, and, and it's, it's fairly complicated. Um, here it's just you, you drag some things onto this palette and you connect them together. Well, now let's fill in some information. So let's actually open up Make Call, and I can either double-click or I can right-mouse click and do properties. And I need a few things. So uh, I want to know who's making the call. So this is like for, for my calling line identification. And so let's just say that uh, 2301, and that's one of my extensions off of this Breeze server, is calling 2304. And I want to pass some caller ID, so let's just um, use the same caller ID, 2301. And I can say OK. Now I can come over here to play announcement. Well, now I want to say something. So let's open it up. This field here allows me to say what it is that I want to say in terms of a text-to-speech. I can actually have a, a media file, and I would you do uh, various options to bring that media file into play, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to make this as very simple as possible. And I can say something as simple as, don't forget to vote today. And I'll put an exclamation point. And I can say, OK, at that point. And at this point, I drop the call. So I say, make the call, play the announcement, and drop the call. Now, there's one thing that I need to do, and this is a little slightly geeky, but it's really not too bad, and that is Breeze allows you to have multiple threads within an application. And what I mean by that is I can actually make lots of calls at the same time, and I can play lots of announcements on those different calls. Now, my simple example is one call, one announcement, and dropping that one call. But Breeze is able to do much more than that. So there's one more thing that we need to do, and that is I'm going to go back and open up Make Call. And you see all this in the videos, and I explain how all this sort of stuff works. Is When you have a task in Breeze, and this is nearly every task, not every task, but nearly every task, you have information that flows into the task, and you have information that can potentially flow out of the task. So for instance, um, um, let's say with, the, well, with Make Call, um, I can have information flow into it. I'm hard coding that information now, but I could actually have it flow in from an outside source. <clears throat> and then I can have, <clears throat> excuse me, I can have, imp and then I'll need to have information coming out of it. If I click on output mapping, it will show me the defaults of what comes out of make call. And two things come out of make call. <clears throat> One of them is the status, that is, you know, the success of this call. And the other is this thing called the universal call ID. And this is the way that you can identify a call. Well, 
as I told you, breeze can handle multiple things at the same time. Well, in this simple example, I want to make the call and play an announcement. I'm going to need to have the announcement know which call I'm going to play this announcement on because I can have more than one. So what I do is if I do this little, click on this little plus sign up here, now what you see is it magically went from the left side to the right side. What this meant is I've made this information public. So now if I go save and get out of this and come back to play announcement and I go to properties, remember I said tasks have information coming in and they have information coming out. Well, one of the things that we need to have coming in to play announcement is, well, what call are you going to play this announcement on? Well, I can pull that over from this public information that I just made for make call and hit save here and then OK. And now I can go to drop call and do the same thing. Which call do I want to drop? And again, you think, well, there's only one call. But again, remember, I could have had lots of calls. So I'm just being more specific. Notice how I'm just dragging this over. And I'm saying, I want you to drop this call, the call that we just made. And we can say OK. At this point, I can come up here and do validate workflow. And if I've done everything correct, I believe I have <clears throat> zero errors, zero warnings. That's a pretty cool thing. So now let's save this workflow. Uh -huh. And it wants uh, you to know where to save it. I'm actually going to create a new folder. Oops. wants me to say what's the parent folder. And I'm going to say this is my uh, webinar. Webinar folder. Uh -huh. I'll create the folder. <clears throat> and you'll see <clears throat> that the folder um, has uh, been created right here. <clears throat> now I can save this, and I'll just call this uh, webinar um, webinar one, just for greens. Okay, and I'll save it. So I've now saved my workflow. So now, what's the next thing I need to do? Well, I've validated, I've saved it. Well, let's deploy it. So we'll go over here to the deploy. And I click on deploy, and it's going to say, well, webinar one, version one. You ready to deploy? I'm going to ignore these other things for now and say, OK. And it's going to come back and say, hey, the val it validated. Well, I already knew that. It started to deploy, and it deployed it. So it's actually sent my application, my snap-in, out to my Breeze cluster. So now the next thing is, well, I want to run this. There are a variety of different ways to run your snap-ins. Again, I'm sort of brute forcing it right now, so we're going to show you the brute force way, and then I'm going to take it a little bit more. I'm going to take it a little further. So going back to my system manager, my cluster administration, I'm going to open up a tool called the admin console. The admin console allows me to do lots of things with snap-ins that I have and deployed onto my server. Well, here's the one that we just stuck out there, webinar one. So I can actually come out here. I can click on it, and I can say create instance. One more thing I want to show you about what's running on my system is I'm actually running a VIA communicator on here as well. So I have a soft phone, and it's logged into 2304. Remember, that was the number that we were going to call. So if I go over here back to my webinar one and do a create instance, and lo and behold, there's the phone ringing. Let's see if I can get my microphone close enough. And well, you didn't hear it, I'm sorry, because my speakers weren't loud enough. <clears throat> but uh, it went and ran the application, and it played the, um, the uh, prompt. If I come over here to this field called Instances, I can actually see the flow of the make call, the play announcement, and the drop call. So let's actually do that one more time, just for some grins, and come back here, do a Create Instance, and say Go. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm sorry. There, there's the phone ringing. Uh, let's do a refresh. Let's catch this guy. And we can see, oh, look at that. We've made the call. It's waiting to be answered. We'll answer the call. OK, I don't know if you heard that this time. I turned up the speakers a little louder. And then it went through the play announcement and drop call. So hopefully you caught that. So anyway, this is a really powerful tool for actually watching your snap-ins in action. And you can click on one of these things. And it'll actually bring up information about what it just did. Um, this isn't really exciting information to you, but some of them have some very exciting information that comes out. So, okay. So let's go back though to my snapping. So let's go back to this guy, and we can say, you know what? That's pretty cool. I made a call and I played an announcement, but you told me before it's multimodal. So let's actually make it multimodal. Let's delete that. Let's delete this, and let's delete this. And so now I can move this over here. 
And on this time, because we've got a modern world and I don't want to just make telephone calls to people, well, let's go back and let's say, instead of a telephone call, let's send a text message. Okay? And so let's go and connect up start to, to send the text message, go to end. Let's open this guy up because I need to do information like who are you going to send the, the text message to. So uh, just add it. Uh, and I'm going to make the sender and the recipient the same just for ease here. And I'm going to add the same sort of information. Don't forget, if I can type that correctly, to vote. And now I can say OK. OK, uh, let's save it. Let's validate it. OK, zero errors, zero warnings. I have now just converted my make call snap-in, my robocall, to a text snap-in. Pretty cool, huh? So let me deploy it. And now I can say OK. And I can come back to admin console. Oh, it says it's deployed. Again, I'm doing things in a, in a um, brute force manner. Uh, let's do a refresh. And you notice we have version 2 out here. That's the one we just created. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this. I'm going to get my phone. Let me, um, I've, got a, um, I've got my uh, cell phone over here. And I'm going to turn it up a little bit loud. Okay, make this really loud. And I'm going to now send this one up, create instance. I'll say OK. So it created an instance. And we come back over here. Oh, did you hear that? I don't know if you heard it, but I heard it. I just got the ding. I just got the text message. So if I do a refresh and I look at this one that I just ran, hey, look at that. It has the text message. So it went from start to send text message to end. So very, very simple workflow, but that shows you how easy it is to create these. Well, let's go back here, though. And I said that I'm making things a little bit brute force. And so I don't, I'm not a, generally a brute force person. So I'm going to make this less brute force. So let's come back here, and let's just say for fun, I want to get rid of the don't forget to vote. I, I want this to be a little more dynamic, okay? So I want to be able to control that outside of hard coding that into the application. So how can I do that? Well, one of the ways I can do that is I can open up this thing called properties. Properties is a way to have data values that are accessible outside of the snap -in. Let's add a new property. And I've got a, a, a great video that walks you through all this. So. And let's just call this one my, um, my robo message. And I'm going to put in, um, again, something similar to don't forget to vote today. I'm going to make it a little more dummy and say OK. Let's come back here to send text message. Open this up. It's going to want a message. Well, I told you tasks have data coming in and they have data coming out. Well, one of the things I can do is I can go to input mapping, go to that property I just set, and then drag that over. And now I'm reading the information from the property. Let's save this. Let's deploy this. And now up to version 3. Oh, there's my, there's my property and said, OK. And you think, well, geez, Andrew, you just sort of went from one hard coding to another hard coding. Well, that's not quite right. If I go back to System Manager, I'm sorry, uh, System Manager over here, and I open up another field with inside of my Breeze uh, folder, and I go and I find the application that we just wrote. What did, they, what did we call that? We called it uh, Webinar 1. Open that up. And, oh, look at that. There's my don't forget to vote today, dummy. I can actually go and open this up and say, well, you know, that's pretty mean. Don't say dummy. And um, I can say friend. Okay. And now what I can do is I can change that from outside of the application. So in this case, you know, I'm still hard coding my, my SMS sender and receiver, but I'm allowing more flexibility. And again, I'm, as I go along, I'm going to make this more and more flexible. But anyway, so I can now have a system administrator go and change this message of the day, perhaps. You know, So basically, I can go in and add information. And again, this is a very simple application, but imagine it might be more complicated. Maybe I'm actually adding information about some database stuff. Which database do I want to go to? And what are the credentials, the login, and the user ID, and the password, and all that sort of stuff? And I can set that down there. In fact, 
I actually go back over here and open up um, one of the snap-ins that I'm using, which I'm using WebText snap-in. So, oops, I know, actually I want to just cancel so, because I don't want to save any of that information. Go back here and let's go back to web text again. And you'll see that it has all sorts of information because I have a web text account. It's a cloud-based SMS service. Here's my uh, application ID. Here's my password. Here's the, uh, the service URL that I'm using and a number of their values. So again, you can expose that to the outside world. And I think this might be a good place to pause for a moment. And Kelly, is there anything? Anybody ask any questions or anything I need to talk about before I move on to step number two? Um, yes, we do have a few questions. <clears throat> so one of the first questions was, um, how do you add a list to the phone numbers? How do you add a list to the phone numbers? Oh, okay, well, that was going to be the next phase. So if you just hold off a minute, I will show you how you will do that. So, okay. Okay, perfect. Um, and then in the um, in the make call example, I assume there is some integration with a via SES manager and or a CM for resources for that call. Can you talk about the integration between um, between Breeze and these platforms? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and Breeze, um, you know, is a server. Um, it's a virtual server. Um, Breeze connects up. Uh, to an Avaya Aura system through Session Manager. Session Manager would then, if it wants to do telephony functions, such as those make call things that we're doing, it would talk to Communication Manager. It uses SIP between um, Communication Manager and Session Manager, and Session Manager and the Breeze server. And then System Manager sits on the side and kind of manages everything. In order to do my media, like the don't forget to vote, I am using an Avaya media server. So an Avaya media server is in the mix as well for that. Um, my text messaging was all web-based or cloud-based, and I was using the, uh, the web text uh, service up in the cloud, and I'm actually underneath the covers. What you don't see is um, that little task, the SMS task, is sending web services calls up to the cloud to actually do send my text messages. So again, Breeze connecting to Session Manager through SIP, and then Session Manager connecting to Communication Manager through SIP. So, so the center of the Breeze universe, or the center of the Aura universe, is Session Manager. Okay. And if there are other questions, I'm going to hold off on those, and we're going to go on to the next phase. So Kelly, that you can hold those for a little bit, because I want to. We're about halfway through our time, and there's about 34 or 50, you know, 30 to 50 hours left that I have to do on this. No, I'm just kidding you. I just have some more important things that I want to show you, and then hopefully it will clear up some of the questions. One of the things was the list. So, like, where do you get the list of phone numbers? So I actually change this to um, a text message, but, uh, but I can actually do, let me drag this over a little bit and make a little more room. <clears throat> uh, I can do the same sort of concept where where do you get the list of phone, you know, the text messages as opposed to for dialing numbers. <clears throat> well, one of the things I can do, and I'm not going to actually walk you through all the steps because I don't have time to do all that, is one of the things I can do is I can actually bring in a database task. So one of the things I can do is I can say, well, let's read those phone numbers from a database. So I can go out and say, what are the numbers that I want to call or send SMS text messages to? get them through the database. So if I open up the properties on this thing, then I have a number of different operations that I can do. First off, I want to apply which database I'm, you know, uh, profile I'm going to use for my database, and I've got one set up already. But then I would actually build my SQL query that would return the information. That information then can get returned into an object that I would build inside of Breeze. It contains the list of phone numbers. And then I can then execute through those phone numbers to make a call, send a text message. So again, by using the read from database, I can do that and then bring those over. There's another way you can do that as well, and I'm going to talk about that in just a bit. And we can do that with web services. But it, uh, a real simple case would be to read from database and then have those numbers come over. So anyway, so let's close this out. And I'm actually get rid of all these different things. And I'm going to change the nature of this snap-in completely. So let's go back to start. And currently, you know, so far I've just sort of shown you that, hey, you know, start is a place to start. Well, it's a little more powerful than that. Let me open up start. 
And I'm going to show you that there are more things to start than just starting. First off, I can actually set a schedule. And I'm not going to do that now because it will walk me through various screens. I don't want to quite go through now. But I can set a schedule and I can say, I want this snap-in to run every day, every other day, you know, every weekday, every Sunday. I want it to run at a particular time. So I can set the schedule up. Which is, so that's pretty cool. I can just have this snap-in automatically run. Um, depending on a particular schedule. And that's interesting and, and, and powerful, but uh, maybe I want to make it a little more asynchronous, and maybe I want it to actually get generated by some external stimuli. And that could be a web service. Uh, it could be an incoming phone call. Maybe I want to have a, have a snap in that runs on an incoming phone call. So if I actually come down here, I can see I have all these things called events. Now, some of these events are events that I created, because clearly, here's the Andrew Make Call event, and here's the AeroSI event, and then I've got, some, I've got a low inventory event that I use for some um, Internet of Things stuff, and then I've got some other stuff as well. But Avaya has created a few events that you can use as well. So one of them is the Call Intercepted event. And you can say, when this event occurs, which means a call has been intercepted, and I can say, well, what kind of call am I going to, a, from a calling party or a call ed or a call party? I'm going to say to the called party, and I want version 1. Okay. And at this point, I want to show you, if I click on output mapping, then what happens, if I can click on output mapping, <clears throat> is that by doing that, it says that this, uh, start event is going to have a bunch of data associated with it that I'm going to make public. Remember, anything that gets pushed over to the right side becomes public. And it will be my start schema, which means I have information about who's calling, who was, uh, who's, who was the call-ed party, uh, eventing party. If you think about uh, ideas of you know somebody was called but it was transferred or forwarded, so what was who was the actual who's the call ID party, who's the one that's actually eventing, and then various information about the call, and there's that universal call ID. Well, that becomes available to um, the rest of the, uh, the snap-in. So if I say, OK, now, so let's say they want a, 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 a thing now, if I make a call to somebody, let's do something, again, as simple as um, uh, play an announcement. So I come over here to media communications. So now if somebody calls me, I can play an announcement. And then I'd say that I actually want uh, that announcement just to say something. Welcome to you know, um, my company name uh, calling. Um, have a nice day. And then I can uh, send that call on to the actual person that was called. So I can say, allow the call to flow through. So I can say, well, let's connect up here. And let's connect up here. Let's connect up here. I come in here again to this guy, and I would want to put in some sort of an, you know, a something announcement, or I could have come back in and actually pulled it over from the properties. Maybe I created a, a, a new property, which is my greeting message, and I type some text in there, and they allowed that to come through. So now what I've done is I've said I have start gets triggered on an incoming call, plays an announcement allows the call to flow through, and then goes to the end. My video number four of the introductory series walks you through this entire process. So it walks you through the whole process. So, but I'm going to do something in, in, in order to make this a little more interesting and to take this, uh, give you a little more bang for your buck on this webinar. I'm actually not going to uh, take, I'm not going to write one on, on hand, but I'm actually going to um, take one that I've already written. So I'm going to open one up down here to show you some things. And I call this my weather snapping. And open this up. It's a little more complicated snapping, but it's an incoming call snapping. How do I know that? Because if I open up start, go to properties, then we will see there's the call set event, and then the type is to the call at party. So let's cancel out of this. Something I can show you here now that I have a larger snapping. See this little window over here? allows me to move around through my snap-in. Now, this snap-in is a little more complicated than what we've been dealing with, but there's some things that you've, probably, you've already seen. You've already seen 
play announcement. You've already seen drop call. Uh, I do another play announcement. I do over here, I do some uh, recognized speech where I actually instead of, I allow a user to speak some words like text message or some other words and then do speech recognition and then and then how the application to follow through from there. Uh, down here, I do some gateways. Again, my if then else logic where I can say basically if they said text, go off and do something and then I go off and send a text message. If they said they, they, they're they done, I go and play an announcement that says that we're done and then things like that. But let me show you a few more things about this. So again, incoming call application, ignoring some of this stuff over here. What I do is I, uh, uh, the, the real first thing that I do is I'm going to play <clears throat> and collect some information. So if I open up this thing, so what am I going to play and collect? So let me see if I do this correctly, press on properties. <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, an announcement that, uh, that I pull in from my properties, which is property greeting. I'm going to collect five digits and I'm going to terminate with the pound sign if I need to. What am I collecting? I said it was for my properties. So if I come over here to properties, and we open it up, I think it was uh, the, the greeting, which is welcome to the fabulous Aero Systems Integration Weather Application. Please enter your five-digit zip code. So what I'm doing is I'm actually allowing somebody to enter a zip code. I then go out, and this is the really cool part, I go out to a web service that I found uh, called Open Weather Map. And I will pass that Open Weather Map some information about what is it that I'm trying to do? Well, I'm trying to get the weather information for, for a particular zip code. That's the one that was entered, a particular country code, um, and some other information. I wanted to get it in, in imperial or you know like Fahrenheit values. And I say get from this web service. So this is a, a fairly interesting application that actually goes and collects information and, and then it passes it to a web service. Uh, and then it gets weather information. It pulls all that weather information that comes back from the web service, and then I build this string, if I go into the output mapping, that takes the information that came from the weather service, uh, attaches some text around that string, and then allows you to um, then, uh, oh, I've seen this before, sorry. I'm running too many applications at the same time. So we're going to ignore that for now. Uh, what it did was it's going to then take that information and convert it into a textual way that you can read things. So uh, if I want to deploy this application, then I would go and sit and deploy. But I'm going to show you one more thing um, before we do that. I'm going to go back into, uh, if I can find it, go back into System Manager, and I'm going to show you something interesting. What happens is that when Calls enter into Breeze. Breeze needs to know where do I send that call to? What snap-in is interested in running that call? So again, I wrote a snap-in that sits there and says, I want to listen for on 20, you know, I want to, you know, I have a phone number that I'm listening on. But how do I tell it what phone number to listen on? And that's what I do here in, in this configuration is I click up this thing called Implicit Users and I walk you through all of this in my videos. I think video four, I walk you through all this. So if this is a little complicated now, go back to video four of the introductory series and you'll see all this. So I'm saying that when I see the number 2304, I want to send it to this service profile called Procop. Now if I go and click on service profiles, I will see Procop. And then I will open up Procop and I will see that I have no services attached to it. Well, I can actually go and attach a service. I've already pre-written my web, my app, my, um, weather application. So I'll just actually, I pre-wrote it and I installed it. Let me go and find it. And here's my weather snap and I can say plus. I can add it. And I can say commit. Now what I've done is I click on this again. We'll notice that, again, video four walks you through all this, that the weather snap in has been associated with the service profile. So what I've done is I've said when somebody calls, again, 2304, send them to the service profile ProCup. When they get to the service profile ProCup, I want you to run this weather snap-in. So let's actually see this in action. And you're actually going to hear it in action because I'm going to go over to, I have another client over here which is running on my iPad, which you can't see, but trust me, it's here. I'm going to make sure the volume is nice and loud. And I'm going to call in 
to 2304, the snap-in that we just wrote, and again, the receiver close enough. Recall that. Enter your five digits of code. Okay, and I'm in Minnesota, 55105. Here is the weather for St. Paul. The current temperature is 38.59 degrees. The current humidity is 75. Wind speed is 5.39 miles per hour, and the weather outlook is clear sky. Would you like a text message with the weather information? Please say text or press 1. Please say done or press 2. Done. I heard done. Please tell your friends about this fabulous application. Goodbye. So, so pretty cool. So to show you that, let's come back over here to instances. Let's do a refresh. And hey, there's the weather snap that I just wrote, or just ran. And you can actually watch it actually go through all the things that we just did. So collect the information for the zip code, play, uh, go out to the web service. If there was an error, I would have an error path. Uh, build the string, speak the words, uh, ask them, do you want a text message or not? I said no, and so I take the path that says no, say, tell your friends about the fabulous weather application, blah, 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 and then I drop the call and I end. So again, this is a pretty much of a kitchen sink type application, but it did a tremendous amount of things. So, so this is to sort of show you the power of Breeze to say that that I can write this application that does web services, does text messages, does um, deals with phone calls. Um, there's a concept called context store, which I haven't really talked about yet, uh, and some other things that have gone that are going on in this application. So some pretty cool stuff. Now I want to show you another thing before I go too much further. We're getting close to the end of the, our time, but there are a few more things I want to show you, and that is, I told you that there are a variety of ways to launch an application. And we were doing some hard-coded stuff in there. And so I was going in and saying, you know, uh, going to the workflow, and I was doing a create instance and launch the application. Um, with an incoming call, I was assigning an Avaya event to it that says, OK, when, it, when a call comes in, launch this snap. And I also told you that I can launch them through a scheduling agency. But the thing that I haven't really shown you, there's one more thing that you can really do is that you can actually say, I want to launch this application from the outside world, kind of like an incoming phone call, but I want to use a web service to do that. And so what Avaya allows you to do is it allows you to create an application that you build your own um, web service interface on top of it. I shouldn't say you build it. It actually, every one of the Breeze applications, every snap, it automatically comes with a web services interface on top of it. It's just built right into the, to the guts of the system. And so what you can do is you can say, well, I want to create an event. And there come some events that are custom made or that are built by Avaya that are part of the system and you can't change them. But there's some you can create your own event. And remember I showed you earlier that Andrew make call event? Well, I can actually edit that. This is the one that I created earlier. And it said, it's, I gave it a name and I gave it an event type similar to call intercepted and call intercepted from call ed party. I can then actually give it a schema. So I'm saying in this event, I want to pass information about who do you want to call, uh, who's calling, uh, who, who do you want to make the call from, who do you want to call. I give it some generic information that you'd use in a communication ad, uh, in application like email addresses and SMS text. So I'm saying from the outside world I want to send this information into a snap-in. Well, once I assign that to a uh, Breeze snap-in, and again, uh, videos on all this stuff, this I believe is video number six of the introductory series. I walk you through all this. I can go to some other web, and that could be anything in the world. Uh, if you're a web services guy like me, you've probably used the Google tool called Postman. And I can actually write an application that uses an event, and I'm here in one, using this one called Communication Event, which is another one of the events that I built, and I'm giving it a type launch word, and I'm sending this information to an external application. So if I say send, what happens? Oh, there's that, you can hear it? I'm calling the phone over here. I can uh, answer that call on, uh, oh, I don't know if you heard the, don't forget to vote, because that was another one I had in there. Um, 
So I actually launch the application, I launch my snapping from an external source. So you might be thinking, well, this is really geeky, I don't get this. But if you're a web services person and you have applications, uh, back-end business applications that want to send uh, asynchronous information to a snap-in, this is pretty cool. I mean, to have some Salesforce or uh, some other application that knows how to do web services that you then build this event, and it's very simple to build the event. Um, in, in the Breeze application, the Breeze uh, admin console, and then associate that with a snap-in and then have some external application launch you. So again, so I showed you a hard-coded way. I talked about database access. I talked about properties. And now I'm talking about web services to do all that. So that's really pretty powerful. And we're getting close to the end. So uh, I'm going to, before I pause for questions again, I'm going to go back into uh, my snap-in. And this is the big fancy snap-in that I wrote. Uh, I'm going to talk about just two more things. Uh, and then we're going to stop and we're going to uh, pause for all the, the, the remaining questions. And um, actually, I'm going to talk about three more things. Uh, I'm not going to demo them, but I'm going to talk about them. And one of them is real-time speech. And it gives you the ability to add in uh, inline speech recognition. So I showed you the one example where I said, you know, say text or done. Uh, you can actually add into a call, so uh, speech recognition, and you can wait for certain phrases to be heard. So the call can be running. You're not paused like my application was, but you're just in the middle of a conversation with somebody, but you're listening for things. You're listening for that person to say, you know, I'm calling about men's, you know, socks. And then, and then have the snap like that, and then do something. It might be direct the agent who's processing this call to do something. A snap-in that I wrote was for a kind of a phony bank. And one of the things it was if I called in and I talked to an agent and I said, I lost my credit card, it instantly began lost credit card processing on behalf of the agent. So the agent didn't have to type anything. It actually came up and said to the agent, I heard lost credit card processing. Do you want to start? And the agent can just press, you know, click on the yes, and it would get going. So anyway, so speech recognition, really powerful. So you can do that as the, as the call is running. You can build all these different speech phrases, and you know which one was said and when it was said. The other thing I want to talk about really quickly is my context store. And context store is extremely powerful. It allows you to associate data with a workflow. And that data can then be used within the workflow. And then more powerfully, it can be used by other workflows. So for instance, I can have a workflow that actually is based on a web page. So the, the, the workflow is kicked off by somebody going to a web page. And one of the things that might happen is somebody puts something in a shopping cart. So I have a, a, you know, an online business, and they put something in the shopping cart. And let's say they just exit the web session. And then they call later. And I know who it is because I've got account information. You know, I know who is you know, entering on the, date, the web page. I know who's calling me. Maybe I associate it with calling line idea, any number of different ways. But I realize that that caller has something in the shopping cart. Well, how might I know that? Well, I can do that with context store. I can actually store the fact that there's something in the shopping cart. So when they call in, I can actually process the call differently. Maybe I route the call differently. Maybe it has higher priority. Maybe the agent that answers the call knows that there's something in the shopping cart and then handles the customer a little bit differently. So I can do that with context store. And I'm doing some context store operations here with this workflow, but I really don't have enough time to walk you through all that we're going to do. And the last thing I want to do before we actually stop and get to the final questions is I can actually build my own custom tasks. So here, arrow SI, I have been building my own custom tasks. So I can now have my own drawer of things, and I have my tools that I can drag over and put those inside of a workflow. So I can say, within the workflow, I want you to reach out to this thing that, in this case, it's with Arrow developed, to go out and do something. This particular snap and actually does internet over things interaction. So it actually can reach out to various sensors and ask the sensors questions about the status of the sensor. And I have different sensors that I interface with. I can know what the temperatures, the humidity, the air pressure. I can know what the light, the, the VU values are, um, and a number of different things. I can actually check heart rate and things like that, and I can build those into a workflow. And you might say, well, why is that so important? Well, imagine that you are a, a company that has uh, coolers. And you build these sensors into your coolers, and 
one of the coolers fails, and so the temperature starts to rise, I can have that sensor automatically trigger a workflow, remember through web services, um, get into a web into a workflow and I can actually read the value of the sensor and I can say, hey, I need to schedule a text technician. Go out to a database, look who is on call, send a text message or make a phone call to the technician and automate, you know, with, with text to speech, say, you know, um, sensor number 35 at location number XYZ has detected a failure. The temperature currently reads, you know, 86 degrees. Um, will you accept this service call, say yes or say no or press one or whatever? If they do, well, then we've scheduled that technician. If they say no, the, snap, the workflow goes and finds another available tech the technician that can handle the call. So again, so again, that's pretty powerful stuff. So I'm integrating Internet of Things with communication technology into these workflows and then all the other gizmos and things that I get provided to actually do some very complicated uh, call processing or workflow processing. Whew. So I think I run through about just as much as I can do in one day, in one hour, I should say. And again, the, the videos that I have go into more and more of these things, and I talk a lot about the gateways and events, and I talk about a lot of these other things. Um, so I really highly recommend that you go off again to AeroSystems Integration YouTube channel and see those. So Kelly, now I'm going to pause, and you're going to tell me what remaining questions we might have. Hi, sure. Um, so we do have a few. Um, the first one is... Um, can the engagement design tool be used as an IDE to program in Java without the program? Or is it, is it a separate IDE required? Also, can you go back after creating a snap-in via the GUI tool and look at the Java programming behind it? Well, uh, the first question, um, if you want to do Java, you actually do that in a different way. Um, and um, for Grins, I can actually bring up an application that I've currently in the process of writing uh, and so and what you do is on that that's, you go and you run Eclipse and my Eclipse unfortunately takes about a minute to start um, and so within Eclipse uh, is how you write your Java code and so uh, there are uh, tools and uh, if you're familiar with writing Java code and you're familiar with something called Maven, there are Maven archetypes that you use to create your your uh, snap-ins. And so I've actually written some fairly uh, complicated snap-ins with Java, um, but you use Eclipse for that. So you don't intermix uh, the ID, the uh, engagement designer. You don't use engagement designer to write Java, you use Eclipse. And Eclipse is a very standard tool. I've been writing Java code in Eclipse for 15 years, maybe longer. I don't even know. I'm feeling old right now. So, and again, apologize. My, my Eclipse takes forever to start on this PC. Um, but eventually you'll start and you'll actually see the pieces of a very, very basic snap-in. Uh, and I've got a much larger snap-in. Um, and then, Kelly, what was the second part of the question, the last, the latter half? Um, sure. So, um, can, you go, uh, can you go back after creating a snap-in via the GUI tool and look at the Java programming behind it? Okay, and the answer to that is no. You cannot look at the Java programming behind the snap-in. You remember it creates XML code, and the XML code is interpreted by the engagement designer runtime snap-in, and you don't see the Java that that occurs below. There is Java. You don't get to see it. You see the XML that instructs uh, engagement designer runtime to run the Java, but you don't get to see it. So, sorry. Anyway, that's this is some real basic stuff that I'm working on right now. It's, as you can see, it's very it's called hello, so pretty simple. Uh, but you can actually walk through and see all the various components. But again, it's all done um, in uh, Eclipse. All right. So, uh, next question, Kelly. Um, sure. So, can you give a 30-second description of Oceana, and is it a snap-in? Uh, 30 seconds, yes, I can do uh, 30 seconds or less. Um, and Oceana is the latest and greatest uh, multimodal contact center uh, offering from Avaya. And it is built on top of Breeze. And there are a number of the snap-ins that I use here uh, to do Breeze, but it has its own snap-ins as well. And so, there are, it, so it is a Breeze application. I should say it's a collection of Breeze snap-ins. 
that all work together. And I haven't shown you how to chain snap-ins together, but you can do all that, and you can tie them into various different ways. But it is it is built on Breeze, and that's an important thing. Is actually a, most, if not all, of the new Avaya technology. I won't say all, but a lot of new Avaya technology will be built on Breeze. So it's it is a collection of snap-ins unique to Breeze, plus using the snap-ins that currently exist in some of the stuff that I actually showed you today. All right, Kelly, anything else? Yep. Um, so if they, someone said, um, it seems to me that Breeze could be an eventual CM replacement, assuming organizations adopt SIP at the, desk, the desktop for hardware registration, as opposed to H323 via CM. Do you see that as a possibility? Um, I see that it will augment clearly a communication manager. Can you do without communication manager? And technically, the answer is yes. Um, I have written um, and I put together systems that have SIP on the endpoint and have basically session manager routing in the middle and no communication manager at all. Now you would lose all the existing uh, communication uh, features that you know there you know, communication communication manager features and lots of them. Could you recreate them all with Breeze? And the answer is probably yes. Will, does that mean that Avaya will be doing them? I cannot speak for what their future will be, but could you create uh, basically a phone system that has a session manager breeze and system manager and maybe the media server? Um, I would say you probably could do a whole, uh, do it all, if not and maybe everything. So is, is that the, the future of Avaya? I cannot speak to that, but it's pretty powerful stuff. Right now, again, Breeze clearly uses communication manager for the features. It rings the phones that way and does another number of other things. And I can actually take you into the bowels of how that works, but we don't have enough time. But but communication manager is required for Avaya uh, call processing, which leads me to another point, which is um, that there's no reason why you couldn't put this on another system. As long as that other system speaks SIP, Session manager can actually tell it to make a call, and session manager can know when a call has been received and blah, 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 and let the other system do all of the call processing, so Cisco or Unify or, or whomever, as long as they support SIP. So they are acting as the communication manager component to Breeze. So again, Breeze doesn't really care that communication manager is there. It just wants something to do the call processing. So is it could it be something else? Yes, as long as it supports SIP, then it can come off the session manager. So, okay, Kelly, anything else now? Yep. Um, could we use speech recognition to collect information in this workflow? So I'm assuming this was a point in time question, so I apologize. Um, and they go on to say, I think this example is using DTMF, right? Well, um, my example that I showed you with the weather application, yes, was using DTMF. And yes, I could do some collection information with speech. It's a little more complicated than I think what you're, what I'm understanding the 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 uh, the question to be. Um, that there there are ways to do that to collect the information and then convert it into text. And I'm actually working with one of my partners, uh, Mutari. A shout out to those guys. Um, and there, they have the ability to take a, so what I'm doing is I'm actually re asking somebody to say something. And let's say they say, you know, uh, I don't know what you're, you know, what are you interested in? Well, I'm interested in men's shirts. And now we go send that to Mutari. Mutari then converts that to text, gets me back the text, and then I can process the text. So I think that's what the, uh, the question refers to. So it's a combination of things. Out of the box, Breeze does not do that, but partnering with other people that do do that, again, like Mutari, then you can get that solution. Uh, Vi, I'm sorry, uh, Microsoft has a similar um, speech or uh, record, you know, uh, trans uh, voice transcription service as well. So we're using a cloud service to do that. So it's not currently part of Breeze. Will it be in the future? I think it might be, but it's not currently there. So I'm, again, in, in my example, the application that I'm writing, I'm using Mutari to to accomplish that. So not quite what you're looking for in terms of, not quite what you're asking for in terms of the speech recognition. That's more of, I heard something. I think you're asking, you want to record and then transcribe. So again, sp the speech tools that Avaya provides, I heard something and then it tells you that it heard it. Um, and my, what I just explained was collect the information 
then send it off to be transcribed, and now it comes back as text. Okay, Kelly? Yep, um, so we have a few more. Um, can you develop a POM type application with this? Um, and when you say POM, I'm hoping they're saying a proactive out dial manager or whatever that outbound manager, a POM. Um, the answer is yes and no. Uh, the answer is yes, is I can do some proactive outbound dialing and do some those things. The no part is if if I understand what you're asking for, uh, and when I've worked with predictive dialers in the past, I want to do things like answering machine detection and busy detection and some of those other things, that won't be necessarily built into your to the Breeze infrastructure. So POM still can do all that, because that generally dedica uh, requires dedicated DSPs or hardware to uh, determine those conditions. So could I write an outbound POM type application? Yes, I could. Again, if I'm a so uh, translating POM to the POM that I understand, can it do all of those sorts of things? Uh, currently, right now, no. Uh, maybe there's an Avaya person somewhere that can say, well, yes, but I don't know of any way that you can do the answering machine detection and some of those other things that I would want to have in a POM application. Okay, Kelly? Um, sure. So how does this product compare to Avaya Voice Portal? Oh, so Experience Portal? Um, well, I will tell you, if I, with my crystal ball, uh, at some point in time, I think Experience Portal will be a Breeze application. So uh, a couple of things, and this comes up actually quite often, is, um, um, well, I can do a lot of this with Experience Portal. And the answer is yes, you can do a lot of this with Experience Portal, but you can't actually do all of it with Experience Portal. Um, and it, it would, it's a longer conversation than I really can have right now, but there are a number of different things that you can do with Breeze Specifically, and one of the most important aspects is, is ex typically when Experience Portal is done with the call is they transfer it, they move it off somewhere. And the reason why you do that is because uh, Experience Portal ports are an expensive commodity and you don't want to keep them tied up for the duration of the call. So you want to get it off of Experience Portal. But now Breeze, on the other hand, I can actually have a Breeze application stay in line with the call for the duration of the call and I'm not chewing up uh, 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 an experience portal port. So that's one, just one of the things. And in a longer conversation, I can talk about more. So, so they can work hand in hand. I can, I can front a Breeze application with an experience portal, or I can have uh, experience portal fronted by a Breeze application, or I can have them just basically, you know, experience portal does its thing, and then Breeze stays on and does its thing. So they can be, um, they can. There's a synergy between the two of them. Uh, again, my crystal ball is I think that at some point in time, Experience Portal will become Breeze. Uh, today, that's not there, but I, I have a feeling that's the direction that things are headed. Okay, Kelly? Um, so are all the applications provided the Avaya engagement design, or do you purchase each application? Okay. Um, there are different things that you would purchase. Um, so there are different packages or bundles that get loaded on here. So uh, if we talk about the speech recognition, um, that or real-time speech, uh, that is a separate snap-in and is purchased separately. Context store, separate snap-in, purchased separately. Um, when I talked earlier in the, the call about uh, park and page, separate snap-in, purchase separately. So the, the basic, the, a lot of the basic tools that become part of the basic bundle, the, the engagement designer bundle. But there are things that are purchased separately. Some are the, the fully built snap-ins, uh, like uh, Conference Assist. Others are the ones that would integrate in with um, an workflow or a snap-in. And there are also the third parties. And again, when, for my text messaging, I'm using web text. And WebText is a cloud service that I um, buy a contract with, and then I get charged on a usage basis uh, with WebText. So the snap-in itself is free, but I need to get the, the eventual contract, the cloud service that I'm billed on uh, for that. So, And I hope I got that. I think so, again, some of it, it comes as part of the package, and some of it is um, part of uh, it's adding, you know, sort of add-ons. Okay, Kelly? Yeah, I think that kind of answered the next question. That are the components um, real-time okay. speech, uh, are they standard of Breeze? So I think you kind of um, kind of answered that question, mm -hmm. unless there's more to elaborate on that. No, no, I think that's, that's pretty much, yeah, what I Perfect. said before still stands. 
Okay, and then uh, just two more. Uh, so does Breeze provide um, to Aura that the ACE platform was to provide? Um, AC, oh, ACE, okay. Uh, hopefully they mean the old Agile Communications environment. It's similar to ACE. It's different technology than ACE. ACE was more of a web services interface. Um, and so the answer is it's, it's, I don't want to say it's next generation because there's no code lineage, but it is kind of next generation in terms of concept over ACE. If they meant to say AES, AES, the application enablement server, um, AES still has a role in, um, in Avaya because it, it can do um, endpoint control. Breeze is really, uh, because of where it sits between session manager, off of session manager, it's more of um, kind of call flow or workflow um, in line, but it's not endpoint control. You, it, the Breeze won't answer an incoming call. That said, there is another tool called, um, oh, and I forget, I'm drawing a blank on the name, that is a Breeze snap-in that interfaces with AES to add in um, endpoint control so I can actually tell it to answer a call and things of that nature. So um, that's, and I'm just, engagement, uh, I can't, I can't, I'm just drawing a blank on the name, but AES, and they didn't ask AES, but I'm throwing that in anyway. AES still exists for a good purpose, uh, and but there's a breeze way to actually interface in with the AES. Yes, perfect. They were, the right teeth, they were actually looking for ACE, so it was perfect. Thank you. Um, and and what, what happens with Java updates? Is this robust enough um, to handle constant updates? Oh, I don't know if I can predict the future, but uh, since I've installed it, and I'm actually using GlassFish, if you're a Java developer, you know what GlassFish is, and every time I get a little thing that says, uh, uh, hey, look at that, is that magic or what, uh, Java update just showed up on my screen, uh, I just say yes, and I install them, and uh, that couldn't have been planned better, and I've never had a problem with that, um, you know, and um, I've... Uh, I've tr I am not quite really up to date with Eclipse, but I've, I've updated Eclipse along the way, and I've also updated Maven along the way, and I haven't had any problems. Can I say that there won't be some problem in the future? With Java, we're actually pretty good about um, deprecation and backwards compliance. So I'm going to say at this point I've been just updating, and things have gone pretty well. And again, I haven't had any problems. Again, I'm using, again, GlassFish is what I use for my uh, Java SDK. And that's pretty techie talk there, but I hopefully somebody understands what that means. And did you say that was the last question, we, Kelly? We actually have one more, and I think this is actually a really uh, interesting question. Um, so can you explain the difference between a snap-in and a workflow? Uh, as again, I use they, I use them interchangeably. And and, and the, the, the best way to say it is really a workflow is a concept. It's the idea of, of uh, the steps that are involved in doing something. So you can almost think of workflow as what you put on a whiteboard. You know, step one, step two, step three, step four, branch here, you know, if then else, blah, blah, blah. That's my workflow. Um, a snap-in is a breeze incarnation of a workflow. So I've actually gone and, and written the code, whether it is written with, um, engagement designer or wit written with um, the uh, Java uh, SDK and I produce what's called an SVAR. So it's either the XML file or an SVAR and uh, then that's the snap-in. So that's kind of the incarnation of a workflow. But they're, they're almost interchangeable and I use them, uh, I'll say that I'm creating a workflow when I'm creating a snap-in and I'm creating a snap-in which is really the concept of a workflow. Workflow is a larger concept um, outside of the Avaya world, and Snap-in is the Avaya incarnation of a workflow. And I hope that answers the question. And I also throw application in there as well. They're kind of all, in my jumbled up mind, all the same. So application, workflow, and Snap-in. But to be technical, again, a Snap-in is the thing that's produced by either Engagement Designer or the Java SDK, and a workflow is a larger concept. Uh, more of the step-by-step-by-step the step by step thought. Again, if you can put it on a whiteboard, it's a workflow. If you can put it on your computer, it's a snap-in, which is an application. All right? 
Any more sneaking after that? No, that was it. That, uh, that about wraps it up. So uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, again, please, and I, I've said this too many times, but the videos have quite a bit of information in them. Um, and I will continue to write about that. Um, uh, I, I write for a number of different places, and there's some articles about that. But the videos are really, I, if I be, may be so humble, they're really pretty good. Uh, they're actually used by Avaya in within their training as well. Uh, they like them so much. So, and they cover a, a lot of different topics. And I walk you through very slowly in everything, and you can play them back and you know pause and you know what did he say, and then and then say okay, I get it now. Uh, and I've had a number of people that have come to me, sent me emails, say I love your videos. I'm now able to do X Y Z. So anyway, well, thank you very much, Kelly. I don't know if you have any closing words, but I think I'm done, and I appreciate everyone for dialing in today. Yeah, no, thank you, everyone. We appreciate you attending um, uh, and uh, joining us today. Um, but thank you all for joining, and I hope you have a great day.